If you watch my laptop reviews, you would notice that I play a lot of racing games. Now, I don't have space for a wheel and pedals here at my desk, so I'm a big user of controllers. And here's Doby with a budget controller that might be my next on-the-go buddy. Let's get it unboxed and test it out. But before we continue with the video, let's keep the lights on here in the studio. This video is brought to you by Sneak Attack Design Lab. They're a clothing company that specializes in technical fashion, more commonly known as techwear. And you can see me in their clothes in most of my videos. I've been supporting their brand ever since I met them back in 2019, and now they're returning the favor. Head on over to this link, you can find it in the description as well, to get 10% off your order from their site. Check their clothes out, you're bound to see something badass over there that'll look great on you. Thank you very much to Sneak Attack for this exclusive promo for my viewers. Now, back to the video. So this is the Dolby TP4-1401 Bluetooth controller for PS4, Android, and PC. It comes in a simple box with some features listed on the front like its built-in 6-axis gyro sensor, touchpad, LED lights, and replaceable joystick hats. At the back, we see the same features and product photos with labels. Alright, let's get it opened. Upon opening up the box, we can immediately see the controller inside a plastic mold to protect it from bumps during shipping. Right below the controller are the different size joystick hats that you can connect. There's a pair of short ones and a pair of tall ones, and the medium ones come pre-installed on the Doby controller. Do note that these are all concave tops with raised rims, so if you're looking for convex ones, you might want to check somewhere else. Underneath the plastic mold are the manual and the USB-A to USB-C charging and data cable. Alright, let's get to the controller. So the Doby TP4-1401 is a slightly simpler take on the tried and tested DualShock 4 design. It's roughly the same size, weight, and ergonomics with the PS4 controller, so if you're moving on from that to this, there's basically no adjustment time. The entire controller is made of plastic and it's got a textured underside for grip. I like this texture better. It's got much more deeper grooves than the one on the DS4. Makes it feel better in the hand. Here at the front, we can see the same layout of buttons, joystick, D-pad, and menu buttons. And even here at the lower front part, we see the same external accessory and 3.5mm headphone jack. We do get some pretty gnarly print on the X, circle, square, and triangle buttons though. I like that. At the top, we can see the same layout of LED indicator and shoulder triggers, which feel practically identical to the DualShock 4. But we also see our first deviation from the DS4 design, a USB-C charging and data port. This is a breath of fresh air compared to the considerably aged micro USB-B port on the DS4. Moving on down to the underside of the device, we see a few more additions not seen on the DS4. Two additional paddle triggers on the underside, the left one is M1 and the right one is M2, and two more buttons marked T and M. Apparently, the T is for turbo mode and the M is the macro button. Sweet. Alright, that's everything. Let's talk about its customization features. Upon turning it on and connecting it to a device, we can see that the thumbsticks are actually RGB. It is very subtle though, so I had to turn off my lights just to see it. To turn this off and save some battery life, you can hold down either stick for 5 seconds and it will turn off the lighting for that stick. It's pretty straightforward. First off, when connecting to a PC, it will always default to Xbox 360 mode or X input. If the software that you're playing with requires the input mode, you can switch to that by pressing the home button for 3 seconds. A pretty useful feature that's usually missing with cheaper gamepad models. To set up the macro recording function, we have to press and hold the macro button for 3 seconds. A motor vibration will confirm the start of the recording, and we can press any string of combination of buttons. Do note that it does have a 14 button press limit. Once you're done recording it, press either the M1 or M2 button to bind your macro there. The controller should vibrate once again to confirm that you've saved your macro. Press the M button and either the M1 or M2 button at the same time to clear your saved macro, and the controller will vibrate once again to confirm that the macro has been cleared. To set up the turbo mode, press and hold the T button and press any non-function button that you want to be repeatedly pressed. As usual, the controller will vibrate once to signify that the input has been selected for turbo mode. 
Then to adjust the speed of turbo mode, you have to press and hold the turbo button at the back and push either up or down on the left thumbstick. There are three levels to the repeat rate, 4 times a second, 8 times a second, and 15 times a second. Lastly, we have rumble. To adjust the intensity of rumble, you have to press and hold the turbo button and push either up or down on the right analog stick. You can set it to either high, medium, or low. I like feeling the road when playing racing games, so I usually set rumble to high on my gamepads. Alright, that's everything on the Dobe TP4-1401. Time for the best part, testing it out. Alright, pairing it to the PC via Bluetooth is fairly easy. Just like the DS4, you just have to press and hold both the home and share button at the same time to put it into pairing mode, and pair it with your device. Do note that this can also be used directly connected to the PC via the USB cable. But yeah, I tested it out on Forza Horizon 5 and Tekken 7, since I don't have Tekken 8 yet. And I don't know what to tell you guys, it's just like a DS4. It doesn't feel like a huge upgrade, mainly that it now takes USB-C cables, but it's just like using a DS4 controller. Ergonomic feel is almost identical with the DS4 too, as it mostly feels like a smoothed out version of that controller. I like that it can take different joystick hats, and I mostly stuck to the tall ones because they felt the most right to me. I normally don't use macro nor turbo modes on any of my games, so I wasn't able to test out the performance of those features as well. But one thing I'd like to point out are the clicky D-pad buttons. They feel like such an upgrade over the mushy, slow rebounding D-pad on the DS4, and it made my playthrough of Tekken 7 much more enjoyable. Then again, I am not a professional Tekken player, so do what you will with that information. Overall, for less than a thousand pesos, this feels like a good deal. Of course, this isn't a detailed review or anything, but for the time I've spent with it, I'm happy, and I would recommend it to anyone looking to have a DS4 experience with their PC. So, that's the Dobe TP4-1401 wireless controller. Do you have any questions about it? Leave them down in the comments and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Also, if you want to buy one for yourself, please check out the description. While you're there, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more tech and tech-adjacent content. That's it, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.